Hi everyone. This is the uh, new sponsor list, December 2017. So I'd like to thank everyone for sponsoring so quick in uh, December. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Now, what I have mixed up for today. These are the colors. Let me put my little uh, ladder back because I had to be on top of the uh, video thing, the iPad. Okay, so what I mixed up, I thought I'd do something different just to see if, uh, if I could mix this paint with the same uh, mixture I do uh, when I'm using the Windsor & Newton. So I have um, light blue permanent, bright aqua green. I have red oxide, brilliant yellow green, cadmium red light hue, and cadmium yellow medium hue. So these are the colors we're gonna use. And for the people that might wanna try the same colors, if you just put the video on pause, you will have plenty of time to write it down. It's all Liquitex the basics. This is the one you want to look for, Liquitex Basics. Here you see the color on the back. Here you can see if it's uh, opaque or transparent. If you want to know exactly what it is you're using. So this is, uh, this is it. You can uh, see all the colors. I'll hold them up a little closer for the people that can't see it because they have a phone. So that's the other color, red oxide. Brilliant yellow green, cadmium red, and the yellow. Now, I'll put these away. And what we're going to be pouring on is a 20 by 20. Um, I'm going to have a lot of drip off on the, uh, on the uh, table. And what I have here is a sort of a butcher paper. As you can see, there's a little plastic covering it. Uh, I was going to sell this in my shop, but you know, I don't know. It, it, it's just too expensive. Uh, I can't even, you know, I wouldn't even feel good if I was asking money for that. What I do want to show you is, see where I did this a couple of days ago and I'm letting it dry. And I'm hoping that I can peel it off as a skin because I really, oops, oh, there we go. Because I really think that's pretty, that long stripe there. I really like that. Now, another thing that, why I'm using Liquitex all of a sudden is because I want to do some sort of a challenge for myself. Um, I'm going to, uh, I've never poured with these colors before. Uh, they're pretty bright and um, I want to do some sort of a challenge like a 14 day challenge with 14 different uh, colored pores, something like that. I want to try that. Now I have been doing a lot of Yupos lately and I've had a lot of questions about them. This is the one, it's dry as you can see and it's Yupo. And the good thing about Yupo is that it doesn't buckle, so it's really, really flat, as you can see, and that's perfect for making jewelry. And as you can see, the, um, the outlines of the cells, everything, it, it, it behaves just like canvas, and uh, when it's dry, it's flexible, as you can see. It doesn't come off. So some people said, you know, I can just peel it off the uh, Yupo. Well, I'm not sure. I think it uh, depends on what kind of uh, pouring medium and the brand of paint you're using because there's no way this is coming off the Yupo. Really, it isn't. I've tried it. I've tried to lift it off. It doesn't work. Now, you can even do the little ones, as you can see this one, because this is perfect to uh, cut out for a pendant. It's very pretty. I put a little glitter on. I do like a little glitter when you're making pendants because it just makes it just a little bit more interesting. They are really, uh, I like making them. 
and you've seen me make these uh, a while back so that's what they turned into and I had another color with a little bit of bronze in there see that and just cutting out you know the most beautiful parts they make for beautiful presents or even you could even sell them <clears throat> Okay, so I guess we're ready to do this pour. I have my pellet knife ready for the sides. Um, I really don't know in which order I'm gonna put this in the cup, but I'm gonna swoosh it on like I did the uh, last couple of pours I did, because um, I think that has something to do with how the uh, cells form when you really, you know, just smack it on there. And you can always try that. It's fun to do. Okay, the um, how I mixed up this paint is the same that I always do uh, with the Windsor and Newton and stuff. It's a uh, 20 to 30 percent pouring medium Vallejo. It's uh, the gloss medium Vallejo, a tiny squirt of uh, Floetrol, and. Uh, in every cup there is uh, three drops of dimethicone, three drops only. So I'm hoping I see a lot of these colors pop up. You know, sometimes you just have so, so many pretty colors and half of them don't even pop up. So I'm hoping that these all come to life when we pour them. That's it. Now about the workshops, um, the people that are living in Holland and are following these uh, videos, um, I'm out of canvases and uh, the, the bad thing is that where I buy my canvases, they're out of the 20 by 20s. And that is something that I want to, uh, I really want to work on when I'm doing uh, workshops. So uh, I'll have to wait till they come in, or I'll have to go down to 1515. They did have those. We'll just see. Okay, now, of course, you can flip cup the thing, you know, put that on top and turn it around. Uh, you can pour it just like this, you know, just pour over here. But I sort of am really liking, you know, just doing this. I'm really liking what's happening. And as you can see, like I was afraid of, a lot of those colors don't pop up. So we'll just give it a little go here. I do like the cells that are forming. Got to get my little palette knife. There we go. Getting the brighter colors because it match, has to match a little bit. Now, see what I'm talking about, about the palette knife? I'm not sure if you can zoom in this far, but look at that. See how it just pulls down that paint? And I think that's kind of pretty. I'm going to do that here. Just pull it down on this side. Pulling it down. I have some here, which I want to pull down. That's good. Okay, only this this little corner. We're ready. Now, do I have to clean my hands a little bit? And get my torch. Now, there were a couple of things I wanted to try. I'm gonna, I'm going to try and do it with this. I know I should have set it up before I poured, but who cares?
I'm just going to see how this works. I don't really like how that works. <laughs> so I'm going to get my uh, trusty uh, little burner and see if I can fix some of this. Okay, that's about it. There are some uh, some pretty little uh, bubbles, and uh, oops, I got got my head in there again. Some big cells, which I'll leave just like that. I think it's uh, kind of pretty. And um, why I why I did the liquid text is uh, more because I wanted to um, just see how these colors interact with each other, and what. What I'm seeing is that the uh, cells are much different than pouring with Windsor and Newton. As you can see, they're um, not as um, profound, not as detailed. Um, here there's a little lacing going on because I can see that this is lacing, but also that is not as appealing as it is with Windsor and Newton. So with the pouring medium and the gloss medium and a little bit of Floetrol, I'm not really, really liking um, how the cells are forming. I do like the uh, the big ones and the little ones. That's okay. I sort of like this going on down here. But other than that, that's it. It's a pretty pour. I'm sure a lot of people will say, oh, I really do like it. And uh, of course, it's, it has a lot to do with the colors because the colors are pretty. But other than that, I'm not, you know, I like them to be especially these cells, I like them to come out and be really nicely formed, have those double rings in them, and that I don't see at all. So this is just another experiment with a different type of paint to see what we get when we use the same uh, pouring medium. Now I get a lot of um, um, emails about, you know, oh, I can't, it's not working for me, it's not, uh, I can't get cells. And the thing is that um, if I don't have a picture, I can't tell you what, what's happening. I absolutely can't because um, what I'm doing now is just making sure all the bubbles are out. So um, without a picture, I can't really say what you're doing. And I have a lot of people that say, I do exactly like you do, but you know, it's just not working for me. And when I ask them, you know, what brand of paint, um, it's usually some sort of a craft paint or very cheap paint and I'm thinking, you know, for um, some some kind of uh, experiments, that's fine. But if you really want to get into this kind of painting, uh, go for the better quality paints. As you can see here, <clears throat> you, can, you can see it for yourself. It's so much more different than using Windsor & Newton. These, um, the cells are really there but not really really formed and that's something that yeah well if you use this paint that's what you get you know and maybe if you use liquid text pouring medium you'll get a better result who knows but for me i will be sticking with my windsor and newton or my vallejos because they really always perform the way i really like so um i'll put this one aside for a bit and uh, let's do something with that drip off. I really do like the colors though. They, um, they are pretty.
and there's not r really that much on the table. There we go. Still have some in the cup. And I'm going to try and see what this gives me. Maybe something pretty for a uh, for some jewelry. Who knows? And what I'm seeing here, it's not selling that, that, that well. Not like Windsor & Newton either. Let's see. Yeah, there it's coming up a little bit. I can see some cells, but not the ones I really like. So I'm going to put some more of the uh, paint that I have here on the uh, pupil. Some orange. Whoops, where's my orange stick? Here it is. And I'm going to fold it over just to make it a little bit more interesting. And then we're going to tap it down. Do the same here. And the same down there. <clears throat> and now I'm going to come straight in with my torch. See what we can burn up. See how it's still not really nicely formed? And that is for me, you know, that's the disappointment. Because it's sort of fuzzy. Not like, you know, we're used to having those cells really pop up really nicely. So I'm going to let it go to the middle here. And this is a good thing that you can do with Yupo. This is really, um, it helps to uh, get that nice and see how, how it's moving now. That is pretty. Now I'm sure we can get some some something out of this. Let's see here. Putting it down. And I'm sure someone's saying, oh, she's going for the glitter. Yes, she is. Just a tiny little bit, a little uh. Not too much, but really is a really light dust. And this is only because, you know, when you cut them out to make a pendant, I like them to have a little bit of a, uh, as you can see there, it's really fine micro glitter and it just does the job. So we do have some cells. Let me get you in close. That's what we got. See that? That's about it. So we're going to let this one dry. We're really happy with it. And the rest is sort of turned to mud. Let me get the big one here away. So we can put it on some paper for it to dry. Here we go. And we'll just put this one away. Now, because I have some more left and I'm not going to be doing anything more with it, I'm, I just want to see what's going to happen if I just put some here. See, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Just a little air. Whoops, that's a lot of air. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a lot of air. Oh, boy. Let me get you in focus. There you go. Uh, that was too much air. I got everything. I covered in paint. 
Oh boy. And a little bit of orange. Whoops. And a little bit of green. And some more of that beautiful rusty color. And some of that turquoise. Because, you know, you never know what you get. And you can always throw this away, but I like doing a little bit, you know, just playing with the paint just a bit. You learn a lot about it. Now, this, this really turns to mud fast. I wasn't expecting that. Not as fast as this. Well, there are some pretty cells here. I like this band going down here, but the overall muddy color I'm not too fond of. So let's see what we get if we really make it into mud. No. See that? This is the color it'll turn into. And it does that really fast. And that has to do with the quality of the paint. Uh, when it really goes muddy really, really fast, it has nothing to do with the opposites or uh, lying next to each other on the color wheel. It's not that. You know, I can do this with uh, other brands of paint and it'll uh, take a lot more uh, stirring and mixing before it all turns to one, um, one color like this. This, is, uh, this does it very, very fast. And it's like not really a color that I can do anything with. It's sort of a poopy color, so I'm not going to be using it. This on the other hand, this bit here, this is nice. And I might uh, try and move it a little when I turn off the video because then I'll have to take this all off and try and move it, make it move down so that I, I can get a nice even spread and that way I might be able to make something out of it. So uh, that's about it for today, guys. Now, what I said about the, um, the challenge that I did from, I want to do for myself, like 14 days, 14 different color palettes, um, I think I'm going to be doing that. And what I'm really missing uh, lately is uh, the experimenting that I did, you know, when I just first started this channel, like pouring on records and on terracotta pots and all that kind of stuff. So um, the last time when I poured on the, uh, on the little lizard I had, the paper mache lizard, that was kind of fun. And um, I think I'll be... Uh, looking on the internet for stuff to pour on or maybe go to a second hand shop one of those thrift shops and see if they have something that i can pour on we'll see how that works out but i want to thank you all for uh, watching this and i hope you all had fun seeing me use a different paint so um all there is left to do or say is love you all to pieces leave and see you in the next video bye bye